researchers may have found some promising, I should say a promising new tool in regard to helping combat COPD, asthma, and ear infections as well. And this component is normally found in grapes and also red wine, known as resveratrol. Right, let's get right into public citation, just so you can get an idea exactly how promising this substance is. But let's begin. Component of grapes can help control inflammation associated with ear infections, asthma, and COPD. Now bear with me. This part's be a little bit technical, but what they're trying to say is as follows, that inflammation caused by certain bacterial pathogens is combated or reduced dramatically when resveratrol is administered, meaning resveratrol can help combat these cascading effects that usually result in bad COPD, asthma, and inflammation due to ear infections. So I'm gonna go through a little technical, I'll get through it, you'll get the gist towards the end, and then we'll go into study parameters. This study found for the first time that resveratrol decreases the NTHI-induced expression of pro-inflammatory mediators in airway epithelial cells and in lungs of mice by enhancing something called MYDADH short and negative regulator inflammatory signaling pathways, blah, blah, blah. MYDADH short is considered a brake pedal protein because it can tightly control inflammation induced by this respiratory pathogen. That's the bacterial pathogen we're talking about. It could be a critical target with significant therapeutic potential for suppressing inflammation associated with chronic airway disease. Let's go into the study parameters. Citation title, resveratrol suppresses NTHI induced inflammation via upregulation of the negative regulator, uh, MYDADH short, published in Scientific Reports in 2016. Full study was public and online, but they pulled it. Now you get to spend $59 if you want to view the article for 24 hours. Pay-per-view research is a whole other subject we can get into some other time. Funding, as you can see, study participants, animals, and some cell cultures. Study length was less than 24 hours. Dosage was as follows. Keep in mind, this is through inoculation. This was 20 milligrams per kilogram of body weight or resveratrol. On a bypass, the cell culture dosage is for speed. Source, as you can see, results were as follows. We have demonstrated, the researchers, that pre-administration of resveratrol significantly decreases NTHI-induced lung inflammation via upregulation of MYD88. In short, conclude concurrently, our findings, the researchers, suggest that resveratrol usage for acute lung inflammation has clinical significance. And to recap the following gist of the English part of the research, the component resveratrol of red wine and grapes can help control inflammation induced by a bacterial pathogen that is linked to the upper respiratory tract inflammatory disease such as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and middle ear infections, otherwise known as otitis media. Note, now keep in mind, this is important when utilizing resveratrol. It has a very short half-life in the body. So I wanna read this one statement from the researchers and keep in mind, this research was done in animals and it has to be replicated in humans to hold greater validity. But let us begin anyways. Metabolism in humans of resveratrol is rapid with conversion metabolites within 30 minutes, therefore identifying the molecular mechanisms of resveratrol's promising anti-inflammatory effects may lead to the development of better therapeutics when improved clinical trial outcomes. Meaning, there may be better ways to administer resveratrol either through mist, through sublingual, uh, through a time release method, but it is promising. So at this point in time, if a researcher was looking at this, they could probably say, hey, I could administer resveratrol to an individual and maybe that could stop the cascade effect that may result in an asthma attack or bad ear infection. But that's for research to determine later on. So as follows, there's the research, very promising. Some great uh, research in regard to COPD. Again, only done in animals, has to be done in humans. But however, though, it's just the same, extremely helpful. Again, this is Ralph Turchano signing off, and I look forward to seeing you on the next report within seven days. See you all later. Catch you then. Bye.